Let's get to our political panel here in Parliament. Daniel Molino, Labor MP, standing in for Andrew Chelton today. It's nice to see him, the chair of the House Economics Committee. Daniel, welcome. Great and the here. Liberal MP, Zoe McKenzie. Hello. You've got the opposite number today who uh, has just kindly joined us, who knows a bit about the economy, which we'll get to him on a moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jim Chalmers says he's vindicated by yeah. the number today because it shows how soft things are and that they shouldn't smash the economy with even further spending cuts in, in his budget of last month. It certainly showed a lot of hubris for a man who can now say he has presided over an entrenched GDP per capita recession. So that's not... Con you're not congratulating Jim Chalmers if you're in the suburbs, mate. If you're paying $25,000 more for your mortgage, if you're paying 25% more for your gas and electricity, if you're paying 17% more for the inflation, you are not saying, thanks, Jim Chalmers, for creating a weak economy and making my life next to unaffordable. Yeah, well, there's, there is a lot of pain out there and the Treasurer did concede that, yes, uh, while things are, are soft and people are hurting, as I put it to Zoe, that was his argument that they got the balance right with the budget. But as Zoe rightly points out, there's not a lot... People won't be falling over themselves to say that things are great right now in terms of their economic situation. So, look, people are hurting, and, and I think the main thing we need to achieve, and this is something all economists agree on, is that we need to get inflation down. So we've seen inflation roughly halved, but there's still a bit of a, a journey to go. And what we're seeing with the budget is that uh, it's putting into place very responsible fiscal settings. So we've gone from deep in deficit to two surpluses in a row. But at the same time... Should, should it have been even more responsible? No, but I think for me... More spending. What costs. we saw today was a number at point one, which says that people did need that assistance. They needed the amended stage three tax cuts, the $300 for their energy subsidies and cheaper medicines. And those are actually going to put additional downward pressure on inflation, which is critical. So I think it is a well-calibrated budget. The, uh, the Governor... Um, of the RBA said that she will look through the energy rebate mm -hmm. and so on when looking at inflation because, of course, our viewers will recall there's been a debate about whether the energy rebate yep. will take yep. some pressure off inflation. Yep. If it does, the measured inflation, the Governor says she's got, the RBA is going to look beyond that yeah. to the underlying inflation. Yeah. And so the underlying... And if, they, if it's sticky, she'll hike. The underlying inflation remains over 4%. It's one of the highest in the world. It's higher than the US, UK, Canada. And so she's still under a lot of pressure to do some of the work that the government won't do. So uh, she's still been cautious. You know, I've told you this myself when I've been talking to the banks recently. They're actually putting up their rates marginally. If you look at fixed rates, uh, they're not really indicating that we're going to see a drop in mortgage rates anytime soon. Hmm. So it's still hard yards ahead. And may I say on that energy rebate, what people were promised 97 times was not a little bit of a handout, 75 bucks a year and 75 bucks there. It was that there would be a new base to the cost of their energy bills and it would be $275 less. So this is just a bit of a Band-Aid here and there for your next four quarters. Thanks very much. No one's proposing to make energy cheaper in the long run. And so good on the RBA by saying, you know, I'm not going to be distracted by that. It's a one-year fix so that you can pretend you actually delivered a promise that you haven't delivered on. It should have been a formula... of a formal rebasing of the prices of energy, and we haven't seen it. The RBA governor, as and I'll get your reaction to that, in, in saying that she will look through the rebate and look at trimmed mean inflation or underlying inflation, that was that a bit of a slap down to suggestions that the government's measures will actually knock off some of the inflationary pressure? No, no, I think the, the RBA's been uh, clear right from the get-go that they tend to look at the... Uh, more stable forms of inflation, but we've seen those core uh, non uh, non volatile trimmed means measures of inflation coming down substantially as well. Um, so they're tracking uh, as they should. And it's the not thing sticky. I think, so I think the thing we need Is to it bear not in sticky mind right now, we're looking at the last oh, couple of months. Look, I think we're seeing in the non traded sector in most of the advanced economies around the world uh, a degree of stickiness, and in a sense, it's not surprising that inflation tends to come down a bit slower as you get closer to. The the goal. That's uh, pretty normal. The thing I think I'd point out about the economy is that uh, we've been able to achieve substantial reductions of inflation with uh, much less disruption of the labour market than many had forecast, which is a really good outcome in terms of the trajectory that we're on. Do you, do you think that a, a rate hike can be avoided before the next election? In fact, that the next move would be down? Well, so my committee has responsibility for uh, subjecting the Reserve Bank Governor to hearings twice a year and I certainly don't get in the business of trying to predict what the Reserve Bank's going to do. Um, but what I would say is um, that 
the, the trajectory of the economy with inflation still tracking down, uh, it's under half of where it was in monthly terms at its peak, uh, the, the budget's in good shape, uh, the labour market um, is again in good shape compared to where many thought it was, so that trajectory is pretty good. Um, I'm not going to try and guess hmm. what the central bank's going to do. Isn't it true that regardless of who was in office, this would be a, a very difficult path to to try and walk right now, to get growth down to about 1% annually, to, to try and get inflation down off the back of the, the pandemic and all the various pressures we've spoken about over many months now? In terms of growth, in terms of strength of the economy, we're back in, like, 1991 territory, right? I worked in this building through the Howard Costello years. You don't have easy years. You don't have easy periods. Uh, you do have years where you bring in more revenue, and we're absolutely in a period where you bring in more revenue. So it's about constraint and careful management of the economy. I listen to these words about, oh, it's all going well and theoretically it looks great. It's not great when bread costs you 7% more than it used to. It's not great when oils and fats cost you 17% more than they used to. I could go through a whole list of things that cost anywhere between 5 and 25% more than they used to two years ago. I've got shops closing in all my small villages that are usually pretty buoyant. I have a, a significant number of retired people. They've still got money yeah. in their pockets, but they're too scared to spend it because, frankly, yeah. they don't trust this government and where it's going with the economy more broadly. What, what do you say to that overall? Assessment? So, look, I, I think the, the price rises is exactly the point that we need to get inflation down. Like, that is the core challenge here. So that's why it's so critical that this government has done so much work in getting the budget in better shape. Uh, if you look at where the budget is at, we came to power with the budget in tens of billions of dollars deficit. We've now had two surpluses in a row. We've had budgets consecutively with tens of billions of dollars of saving. Uh, the budget that we inherited, zero dollars in saving. So there's a lot of hard work in fiscal consolidation that goes into this, and that's what's necessary to get us to where we need to be with low inflation. We're almost out of time. I do want to get your thoughts quickly on the social media push. The News Corp boss, Michael Miller, at Press Club today, making the case that they need to just be better social citizens, uh, social media, these giants. Um, have you got any reflections on that, first of all, you, Zoe, and well, what your community and is telling you? on the social media committee that the government set up a couple of weeks ago, and that will look at a broad range of, of issues as to where social media has now got some really, really sharp edges. Uh, we were just talking before coming onto the show about what had happened in Daniel's office, what had happened in Pete Carlyle's office, the fact that the e-safety commissioner's kids had been doxxed, you know... We are lacking grace, we are lacking calm, we are lacking respect for people who, you know, execute important functions, whether that's MPs or senior agency um, leaders. There's a real problem and a lot of the whooping up, a lot of the fury is happening in that social media space. Hmm. We've got to have a good hard look at it in terms of, you know, not just how we're behaving to each other, bullying of kids, sexploitation, yeah. radicalisation uh, and foreign interference. It's a big topic and at least we're getting started. Yeah, well... I, th I think that's right, at least that it is uh, getting the, the focus it needs and there will be many parents out there hoping that you, you can make some real progress. Well, like the, the Malinowskis call for a ban on, on social media for young ones. I, I think it was overwhelming, the reaction for him. Well, on these panels, you would almost always see people like Zoe and I arguing, as, as is important in, a, in an adversarial system, but on this social media committee, I think there's actually going to be a real attempt to Good. come at a sensible uh, solution as much as we can across parties, and I'm really looking forward to working with Zoe on this important inquiry. Well, Freedom yeah. of speech and innovation is important, but I think there, there need to be more controls than there currently are. There needs to be, yeah, yeah. honouring a social licence, because yep. at the moment there's not a lot of, of that. Thank yeah. you. Can I say, I don't yeah. think it's a, a, an anti-free speech argument. Algorithms don't mean people get free and fair and full None. exploration of topics. They get an algorithmically perverted debate. That's what we need to fix. Well, I do hope that you do make some ground in the government too. Let's stay in touch on that anyway. Daniel Molino, Zoe McKenzie, thank you 